A major problem I spot within the trading community is that traders, and not only beginners, but also intermediate traders, do not know how to create their trading plan. You do not know what a trading plan is, you don't know the difference between a strategy and a risk money management plan, you don't know how to set a clear and realistic objective for your trading business, and what you end up doing is just randomly trading without any foundation for your trading business, and as a result, you keep changing strategies, you stay confused and frustrated, you don't know what to do, and at the end, you end up giving up, right? Well, it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or a seasoned trader, we all start by building a strong foundation. You know that in order to build a large building, first you have to dig deep under the ground, set the foundation, and only then start building on top. Traders, this is going to be a video series of four comprehensive videos which are going to take you by the hand, help you craft your trading plan, teach you basic and advanced technical analysis, supply and demand, liquidity, how to enter trades, and really building everything from the ground up. And in today's lesson, we're going to craft your own trading plan from scratch. So make sure to turn off your phone, close your charts, cut any distractions, and let's get to work, shall we? So as I said, this is going to be a video series of four videos, and right now I want to set up your expectations, right? So in this video, we're going to build your trading plan from scratch. I'm going to teach you all you need to include in your trading plan. I'm going to give you also tools and templates. So you have all the tools in order to craft your trading plan. In the second video, we're going to really dive deep into market structure and how to read it correctly. We're going to have a look at basic and advanced market structure. So we're going to have a look at major, minor structure, premium and discount ranges, strong and weak highs and lows, market formations, and much more. So I'm really going to build that foundation for you so that you have no excuse um, not to know how to read market structure correctly. Then we're going to master supply and demand. Right, we're going to have a look at supply and demand zones, the so-called order blocks as well, liquidity concepts, and all the supply and demand concepts that I use in my own trading. So then that can give a boost onto your market structure understanding. And then in the final video, we're going to learn how to enter trades as day traders. But not only that, I'm going to show you how to enter also as a swing trader with a job having a nine to five. So we're going to cover time frames. We're going to cover top down analysis, and I'm going to teach you, teach you two very simple entry systems. So Make sure to stay tuned, turn on the notification bell in order not to miss those videos when they come out. And of course, if you like what I say, if you love the content, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It's going to really help. All right. So first, I want to address your problems as a trader, right? So you don't have a plan, you don't have a strategy, yet you really want fast results, quick money and lifestyle improvements, right? So because of that, this is a major mindset flaw. You end up sending your money to scammers, robots, fake gurus that have fake promises, or you invest in like high risk assets like cryptos or like robots and anything like this. So pretty much this is you start with a flawed mindset about what the game of trading really is, right? You're completely lost when it comes to creating a trading plan. And let's be honest, you are a little bit lazy to put together one or you're just confused and you try to run away from your um, necessity of making a trading plan. So what you do is you just trade without one. You end up watching a couple of videos, you study a course and you just learn a little thing from here, a little thing from there, and then you just start trading and you're confused. You don't know how to track your trades. You don't know how to improve and you just end up in a big loop, right? You don't know how to find high quality trading setups, right? All of your setups are average. They're not systematic. This ends up in doubt, right? You doubt yourself because what you have studied so far seems just not to work, right? Why? Because you use a combination of stuff you saw online and you just hope for the best, right? You just keep watching clickbait videos that pretty much teach you nothing. They just throw away a couple of concepts out there, pick up some charts that really show you like a good trade. And then you're like, OK, that really works. I'm going to go and do this. And then you just go live on the markets and you see that it just doesn't work, right? A big problem is that you do not know when to enter trades, right? How to enter trades, when to go break even, when to exit your trades. So you're constantly like going break even or exiting too early or taking stop losses, right? So you don't really have a systematic plan. And because you lack a plan, you always go FOMO. So you always over trade, you revenge trade. You really want to make some money from the market without having a clean plan. And then you end up constantly blowing your account and your challenges as well, right? And at times, of course, at the end of the day, you feel a little bit worthless and uh, you are about to give up on your trading. But again, sometimes 
you just keep coming back, right? Well, not sometimes, you always keep coming back, right? Because again, trading, uh, you we all think that it's the escape from our all of our problems. It's the escape from making like not a lot of money to making millions. This is not the case, so I'm here to keep you accountable and really show you what the game of trading is, right? So before we really jump into the nitty-gritty stuff, the series are not for traders that are looking to be spoon-fed, right? Without putting in any work, right? If you're one of those traders, then don't watch this video, right? These series are not for traders that are not willing to sacrifice 10,000 hours on their craft. You know, there is a saying that you become a master of your craft if you, just, if you spend 10,000 hours on it. So if you're just starting out in your first year, what makes you think that you should be profitable, right? Have you put in 10,000 hours on your craft? I don't know, right? So make sure you do that. If this is not for traders that believe that there is a get rich quick scheme out there, guys, trading is not get rich quick. Please understand it, right? And stop trusting people that are promising you like huge returns, huge trades, become a millionaire in one month. No, this is also not for traders who are looking for a holy grail strategy that will make them millionaires after watching a few videos, right? This is still not the case. I'm going to give you all the foundation, but then you still have to go and test it out and see that it actually works. So that you actually trust it yourself, right? Put in the 10,000 hours, right? And also traders that are not willing to sit down for 45 minutes with me and work on their plan, okay? So if you're not willing to sit down, download the tools below, uh, fill in your trading plan, print it out, read it every day, then again, trading is not for you, right? And of course, I don't want to talk to traders that are not willing to invest in themselves and in their professional development. Because again, I hope you all have a professional attitude and you know what the trading game is all about. It takes time, effort, dedication, market experience, right? But of course, there are always shortcuts to take by simply not learning the wrong stuff, all right? So make sure to dedicate some time and let's get into building your risk and money management. And we're going to have it like a masterclass like this is actually part of my private program. I'm sharing stuff that is worth uh, a lot to me. So hopefully you pay attention. So first of all, I am including some tools into the whole thing, right? So make sure to go have a look at the description of the video. There is going to be a link. Click on that link, enter your email, and I'm going to be sending you some really valuable stuff to assist you with your learning and building your plan. You're going to receive a training plan template. You're going to receive a weekly reflection and habit tracker. This is going to be on Notion. And as you download the tool, there is going to be a separate tutorial on how to use that tool, right? Because it's not very self-explanatory. So I'm going to give my best to actually teach you how to use it. And I'm going to be attaching a PDF of a trading session guideline. So make sure to click below and download all this valuable stuff. All right. So what are the pillars of trading, right? So there are two parts of a trading plan, right? Risk management plan, purpose, objectives, habits, trade windows. This is pretty much like the, the first part, right? And I separate the trading plan into two parts because, again, you have like your business plan, which is, again, exactly this. Your risk plan, your money plan, your purpose. What are your goals? What are your objectives? What are your habits? When are you going to trade? What are you going to trade? And all of that stuff that we're going to cover, right? And then there is the second part. That is your edge. That is your strategy. This is what exactly you're going to do as you open your charts. What are you going to trade? How are you going to trade, right? So really actually building a strong foundation and then building on top of that foundation is really important because a lot of traders first jump into the advanced stuff and skip the foundation. And again, you keep going into that loop. You are always going to have something missing that is going to hinder you from propelling going forward, right? So some of you might think here that you're advanced traders because you spend a lot of time on the charts, but you're still struggling. Why? Well, because you do not have the foundation, right? So... You've probably heard a trader say, I suck, so I'm going back to the basics, right? So make sure that you're actually honest with yourself and do that. So again, first, we're going to start with this risk management plan that is backed up by realistic trading objectives and a powerful purpose and proper habits. Then always we have a look at market structure, because according to me, the absolute foundation of any market and any strategy is market structure. Of course, this, uh, this is uh, it's necessary that you trade like candlesticks or line charts right? Because if you trade like uh, volumes or if you trade like uh, Renko's and any of that stuff, then it doesn't apply as much. But I think a lot of us are trading the candlesticks. So we're all on the same page. After you learn the foundations of market structure, then we jump onto supply and demand concepts, which pretty much offers us the cherry of the cake, offering us precision and high win rate, right? There is a, that kind of the triangle, right? So we have risk management, mindset, and strategy. If you are not good at any of those three parts, you are going to be pushed around, right? Because you can be a great risk manager, 
right? You might have a very good strategy, but if your mindset is bad, if you constantly go FOMO or if you're fearful, you're not going to succeed, right? Or you might be the best trader of all, like uh, with a very solid mindset, you might have the absolute best risk, manage risk and money management plan, but if your strategy doesn't work, then you're still not going to succeed, right? Or if you have an amazing strategy and a brutal mindset, right? You're very solid, you never go emotional, but you just don't have a risk and money management plan, you're still going to blow your account, right? So those are the three foundations of trading. And pretty much this is my pyramid. We start from risk management, then we learn market structure, and then we go into supply and demand concepts, entries, and everything. So let's start with something very important that not a lot of you are taking seriously, and that is your why. Why are you trading? Why do you want to trade? So what is your main driver for trading? And I'm sure a lot of you are going to say money. I want to make money. I want to quit my job. Then why do you need that money exactly? Right? So always dig deeper. Okay? So money only solves like money problems. There is always a higher purpose that you want to achieve. Right? So maybe you want to help your family. Maybe you want to travel, right? Maybe you want to buy good clothes. Maybe you want to give to charity. Maybe you want to have time to open up your business, right? There are, is always something bigger. And even if you like find the second, um, the second driver, so cool, I need money. Why do you need the money? I want to travel. Why do you want to travel? Right? I want to experience this. Why do you want to experience this? And then again, ask this seven times, the seven whys, right? So Keep asking why, 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 and then you're going to come up to your deepest purpose, okay? Because in trading, it's very important that you figure this out. What is your purpose and where are you going, okay? My purpose, yes, I need money, but trading is more than trading to me. Trading is something that I love. I have built a, a business around trading. I just love helping traders, and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I have to be a good trader. I have to be a good role model for traders as well, right? Trading is also accelerating my income because I want to create multiple income streams. Why do I want to create multiple income streams? Because of this. Why do I want this? Because of that, right? So keep digging deep. The second thing you have to figure out is do you want to support your current income or do you want to completely replace it? And be realistic and honest, right? Don't say, yes, I want to quit my job and just make millions from trading, right? I work with traders that are seasoned traders and, and all of them have jobs who, uh, which they love, right? So you might not necessarily want to quit your job, right? Remember, trading is an income accelerator. It's not an income replacer, if there is a word for that, right? You work, you get a steady income, you save 10 to 15% to 20% of that, you put it into your trading account and then you use your trading account to accelerate your income. Right, you don't use your trading account to really like uh, go to the millions. Okay, so be realistic and honest. Right, and again, I do not advise to use trading as a full-time job, an only source of income. I've listened to a lot of people. I've listened to uh, many uh, very successful traders on podcasts and stuff, and one of them was having trading as the solely source of income, monthly income, yearly income, and he had like all of a sudden one day he just has a heart attack and he almost died. Right, why? Because trading is stressful and if you're going to rely on trading profits every single month this month you can win five percent the next month you can lose three percent the next month you can be break even the next month you can be minus one right so you cannot really rely on trading for a consistent monthly income you always have to have something pouring money into your pockets right so we're going back to your why in trading this is going to be your driver Right? This is going to keep you going in rough moments. You had a massive losing streak. You're not feeling very good. Always go back to your why. Why are you trading? Right? And again, there is no wrong answer. It just has to make sense to you and it has to be authentic. So again, don't listen to me why I trade. Listen to you. Why are you trading? Okay? And dig deeper. Okay? And again, detach from all the hype online. Trading is not what social media portrays it to be. Right? Cars, watches, beach trading, parties. It's all just a picture that they're building for, for us, trying to sell us the, the dream, right? But again, there is always a deeper purpose than that. Let's jump into some good stuff, right? Your monetary goes. So let's jump into a little workshop. I want to have a little experiment with you right now. So again, pay attention. There is always a difference between how much do you want to make or think you should be making and how much do you actually need to make, right? But nobody tells you this. So let's try an experiment, right? Stay with me. How much do you want to make? 
right? Per month, per quarter, per year. How much do you think you need in order to be free, right? How much do you want to make that you think that you, this is it? This is how much I want to make, right? So I want you to think of a number and write it down. Do you want to make 1 million this year or 10,000 this month, right? So what do you think you want to make in order to feel good with your trading? Okay, so write this number down. Then we're going to need to do some work because then we need to figure out how much do you need to make per month, per quarter, and per year, right? So first, what are your monthly living expenses, right? There are usually uh, five essentials, home, like this is your mortgage or your rent, utilities for home, food, transportation, insurance, right? So those are uh, all the expenses you can have. So make sure that you're actually going right now in your bank statements and everything and figure out your living expenses every month, right? And then you can have all of those, multiply them by 12. Of course, they're always going to be unexpected purchases, uh, emergencies as well. But just get a rough estimation of what do you need per month in order to survive, right? Then what I want you to write down is how much are you currently earning from your job, okay? And all of this is into your training plan template. So download this one out and do the stuff there, right? So how much are you currently earning? And then how much do you need to earn per month to cover your living expenses, right? So pretty much if your living expenses are 3000 per month, then you need to earn 3000 in order to cover that, right? And then how much do you need to earn per month to replace your job income? Okay, so those are the couple of important questions you need to answer. And then I'm going to circle back to uh, your want, right? So what number did you type in the beginning, right? Say you wanted 10000 right? I want to make 10000 or I want to make uh, 100000 this year, right? And then usually going from your want number to your need number, there is going to be a big difference, right? So I hope there is and uh, that you actually did this exercise correctly because again, we always want to make a lot, right? But what we actually need is much lower than that. I'm recommending you to read the book. It's called Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. And there the, the guy explains that again, you can live your dream life for much less than what you expect, right? So you might think that you need to make 1 million in order to, to learn your dream life, but you might only need 100,000 to live your dream life, right? So if there is a big num difference between your want and need number, that is because you have unrealistic expectations, bad money management, and lack of a wealth creation system, right? So your need number is for financial stability and financial security, right? So that, that's very important. This is the, this is the first stage of uh, becoming financially free. And then, of course, the next stages are financial vitality, independence, freedom, and absolute freedom. So if you want to learn how to build those ones as well, let me know in the comments. I can make some videos on those. So for now, how much do you want to make? But it's very important to figure out your need number, okay? So make sure that you tick all of these boxes and include them in your trading plan. All right, so let's go forward. Let's have a little example, right? So once you know your need number, you then have to brainstorm on your needed account balance in order to fulfill that. Okay, so this is when we talk trading, right? And account balances. So however, there is a little detail. First, you will need data. So you're going to need your to know your win rate, your average risk to rewards, and your average monthly return. So what is realistic for you to return every month, right? So let me give an example. I need uh, 1500 for my living expenses, right? And I currently make 2000 for my job. I am great at generating on average 5% per month consistently. Okay, so that is a conservative figure for some of you. But again, I promise you, long-term trading, those are the results you should be getting, right? 5 to 10% is all you need to learn and to earn, right? So in order to cover my living expenses, I need an account of $30,000. How did I calculate that? Is you take your need number and you multiply and you, sorry, divide that by the percentage you can make per month, right? And you do it like 0.05, right? So if you need to, uh, to your need number is 2K, then you do 2K. And if you can return, let's say 10% per month consistently, then you do divided by 0.10 and you're going to get a number. And this number is going to be the uh, account balance that you need in order to first cover your living expenses. And then in order to replace your job income, which in our case was 2,000, right? We do the same and then this gives us a new account balance, right? So do you see right now that it, you don't actually need a uh, 200K account, a $1 million account? In, all, in order to make this, you need just a $40,000 account and you can buy a funded challenge for that for like, uh, what is it, 200 bucks, right? So it's all about setting realistic goals, okay? So 
make sure to play with the numbers, right? What is your target account size, right? And how can you get there? Make a detailed plan. You can go through there through funding companies and then you can scale them slowly. I'm going to give you an example right now of a member of, of the Fanatics who is applying like a very low risk model of starting a, a very small challenge and then using the profits he generates from the challenge to fund uh, his like future challenges, right? So all the risk he has is just a very small investment of like $70 at first, right? So how are you going to get to your 40k, for example? Make a plan. Are you just going to straightforward buy a 40k? Are you going to scale it, right? Or do you want to scale your live account? Right, so go to this website, right? We can do it together and check out how like how much you can start with. So if you have, for example, 5,000 right now and you generate an average 5%, and if you start with 5,000 and generate 5% every month, but every month you add 500 to this account, how long is it going to uh, take you in order to go to 30K? Okay, so figure that out, right? Go play with the numbers. I'm not going to do this for you. Again, this is a workshop. Okay, so I'm just giving you the clues right there. And then, of course, another important question to ask is, okay, what are the high priority actions that you can take in order to achieve your plan, right? So think in terms of action, habits, routine, not achievements. So in your training plan, don't say, I want to get 40K. Say, how, what am I going to do to get to 40K? What habits am I going to have? What routine am I going to introduce, right? What uh, content am I going to study in order to get there? All right, so think in terms of actions, not achievements, because it's the actions that are going to give us the potential results, right? So this is our money, kind of money management workshop right now. So again, I want to touch once again, why is risk management so important? Well, it's because trading is a business, right? In order to run a successful business, you need a business plan. So this is pretty much what we're building up right now. And without understanding of risk management, you're just doomed to fail because this is the core of the game, right? Risk management, strategy, mindset. With correct risk management also, it is literally impossible to blow an account or lose a big chunk of it. So if you're blowing account, you don't have a risk management plan, I promise you. You cannot blow an account if you have a very strict risk and money management plan and you know what you're doing. It also helps you obtain a growth and a long-term mindset and not be stuck in like short-term thinking because if you did the monetary goals workshop and you know where you're going, you have patience of mind, right? You have... Um, confidence that you're going to get there and you think long term you think in terms of long time frame horizons you don't think how you're going to get rich next month right and it also helps you like manage your cash flows and expenses right remember it's a business so having a plan tells you when to take cash how much to to uh you can lose how much you can gain you can forecast your growth and this makes trading more stable and more realistic right and also building up your trading plan right now in risk money management plan, which we're going to be doing right now, it helps you to understand what type of person you are. Are you risk averse? Are you more risky trader? Are you conservative? Are you aggressive? Right. Again, your plan should fit you as a person. So let's jump into the next very important part, which is building uh, our uh, risk parameters. Right. So the pre in the previous section, we built our monetary management plan. Right. So money plan. So what type of account do we need? What kind of returns can we get? What is my need number? What is my living expenses, right? And how much do I need to earn in order to cover my living expenses? And how much do I need to earn? Or what kind of account balance do I need in order to quit my job? If you want to do that, right? So right now we are going to address risk parameters. And there are five of those that I include in my plan. First of all, what is your risk per trade? So look for a range from 0.25 to 1%. Some of you might go above 1%. This depends on how many trades you are taking, right? But I would really not recommend going above this number, maximum 2%, all right? This number is very important because then it affects the second number. So what is your max percentage or trades as in a trade size, right? How many trades are you going to take per day? So what is your max loss per day? Okay, so in your max loss, you can look at it from a percentage point of view or trades point of view. It's pretty much the same. So if you say that I'm going to lose three trades per day with a risk of 1%, then that's 3% loss per day. Or if you're going to say uh, uh, I want to, my maximum risk to lose per day is uh, like 5%, then that is going to be five trades with 1% or 10 trades with 0.5%. Okay, so what I want you to do is to allow for at least two to three strikes per day because you know, um, not always you're just going to take one trade per day and the one trade could be a loss. The second trade could be a loss, but the third trade can give you 5R, right? And that is what puts you on profit at the end of the day, right? So always allow 
to have room for a couple of strikes per day. Then the third thing is, what is your max loss per week? So what, uh, when are you going to stop training this week? Okay, so then look for a range between 3 to 6% because, again, you don't want to dig a very deep hole uh, for a week. Okay, so when are you going to stop training for this week, right? When you lose, how much? Okay, the next thing you have to do is you have to introduce a flat lining criteria. So this is a little bit advanced, right? But I'm going to show you how I do it. So this is when are you going to reduce your risk and step back? Okay, so this is when you're going to need the drawdown threshold. My drawdown threshold is 4%. So if I lose 4, if I go 4% below my initial balance or this week I lose 4%, then I'm going to reduce my risk by half. And I'm only going to be trading with that half risk if I am below that drawdown threshold. Right, so say I lose 4.5% this week and I'm uh, risking 0.5% per trade. I'm going to reduce here to 0.25%. And say I win a trade and I go back right now to minus 3.5 in drawdown. This is no longer under my drawdown threshold. So then I risk here again 0.5. Why do I do this? It's in order to avoid digging a deeper hole below this drawdown threshold. Right. So decide when do you want to stop going back. And I'm going to show you why this is important. Right. And then your fifth criteria, which is again also not important, is scaling your profits. Okay. So when will you allow yourself to take more risk? Personally, if I make a, a winning week of like, uh, let's say, 5% profit, then I can increase my risk to 0.75 uh, as long as I am uh, securing the week into profit. Okay, but again, that is not very important. So that is the first one. We're going to have an example. And then your profit targets, right? Again, you cannot go broke by taking profit. So make sure that you have a take profit and partialing system. When are you going to take take profit? Okay, this is more technical. So we're gonna I'm going to teach you later how to take profit, right? So when are you going to take profit? Is it going to be at fixed risk to reward? Is it going to be at a very recent supply and demand for support and resistance level? When? Are you going to be taking any partials? Are you going to be going break even? Right. So this still goes into your risk parameters. Right. And then, of course, depending on your goals, what return do you need? So if you want to scale your account, 5% is great. If you want to get funded, then you have to target 8 to 10% per month. Right. This is all you need. You don't need more than that. Okay. So let me right now go ahead and give you an example. Okay, so there are my risk parameters. I risk 0.25% per trade on my live account, right? That's my live account on funded. I, I do more when I do challenges and, and when I trade funded. My max daily loss is 1%. Okay, so that those are four losing trades in a row. So if I lose 1%, which is uh, four losing trades in a row, I stop for the day and I call it a day. Okay, and you can see when I risk little, it allows me to take four trades before I lose 1%. So I'm really comfortable with losing 1% per day, right? So this is my golden mean, and that's me, right? You can be comfortable with losing 5% uh, per day and risking 1% per trade. Again, that's up to you, okay? My max weekly loss is 3.5%, okay? So I, if I lose 3.5%, which never happens usually, then I'm gonna stop trading. What is 3.5%? This is 14 losing trades in a row, okay? So if I meet this, then I have to stop trading for the week. But again, this rarely happens. It doesn't really happen. Okay, so again, when are you going to stop trading uh, for the week? What kind of loss limit are you going to put on yourself? Okay, so there is my flatlining. If my balance f falls below 4%, right? Or if I lose 4% this week, I'm going to reduce my risk to 0.12%. But again, if you see... My max weekly loss is 3.5, so I never get to this point, right? I have made it like this. This works perfectly for me because I'm almost never required to reduce my risk. If I, however, start a challenge, right, and I fall below 4%, that's when I'm going to decrease my risk in order to avoid going below 4%, for example. And I only trade with this risk if I am below that 4% drawdown, right? The moment I cross that threshold and say I'm right now in 3.8% drawdown, not anymore 4%, then I'm back at full risk, okay? You can do this for your challenges in order to, again, avoid digging a deeper hole um, of drawdown. And of course, if I make 5% on my account and I increase to 5%, then I'm going to increase my risk to 0.50% per trade, and I trade with this risk as long as I am above 2% in profit, right? And this is to ensure that I still stay in profit and not going to drawdown. Because if you go to 5% profit with 0.25% risk and all of a sudden you risk 0.50, then it's going to take you for six losses. It's going to take you six losses, right, in order to go back to 
for example, um, where is it to 2% profit. So always ensure that you're staying in profit if you're going to be increasing your risk this week. Okay. And of course, then if your risk is increased, then you're also, your max daily loss has to increase as well, right? If you're going to be increasing your risk overall on your trading plan. Okay. So I do this on my live account, right? I do it in batches. So if I make, so if I go from zero to, for example, yeah, 5%, then I increase my risk, but then also uh, my daily loss increases. If I then go to 10% profit, I can still increase my risk. And this allows for your market to start compounding massively because you also increase your risk, your earnings are increasing, and then you can really compound, right? Uh, I always take a fixed TP at 5R when my stop loss is below 5 pips. And if my stop loss is above 5 pips, I take a fixed TP at 4 risk to reward. And I target a monthly target of 5%. That's me, okay? So pretty much you have to do this right now. So make sure to fill up your risk and money management plan. Why is risk to reward ratio so important, right? So why do you need to know your win rate and why do you need to know your risk to reward ratio? Because again, this is going to allow you to stay in the game, right? The only thing that is going to keep you in the game is risk to reward ratio, right? And this concept is pretty much going to make you the casino. So it doesn't matter how much you lose, uh, but what matters how big your winners are when you fail, right? So this is a very foundational principle of trading, which illustrates the statistical uh, and probabilistic part of it. Like personally, I am in this category right there. Rarely do I go below 40%, but yeah, we can do like this. Usually this is where you're going to be, right? Below 30%, you're probably yeah doing something wrong, right? Usually this is where you're going to be with a very good strategy. And I trade with like with a minimum of one to four. So you can see even if I have a 30% win rate, I'm going to be profitable. If I have a 40% win rate, I'm very profitable, okay? So pretty much this is where you want to be right there because again let's be realistic you're gonna have a 30 to 40 percent win rate sometimes 50 it depends on your strategy okay so this is where you want to be right there so again this happens with back testing and with gathering data what is your win rate and what is your average risk to reward and this is also going to help you determine your uh, projected earnings so then you can uh, include that in your monetary goals okay and then of course i want to touch on why win rate is important Right, because when you know your win rate, you know uh, what is the probability of losing a couple of consecutive trades in a row. Right, so knowing your overall average win rate is help you because then you can plan for losing streaks. Right, and it also shows you the minimum risk to reward you need in order to come up profitable. Okay, so say I give an example with my with my example with a forty percent win rate. Right, I have a fifty percent chance of losing eight trades in a row. This chart is from FTMO, very helpful. Right. I have a 70% chance to lose seven trades in a row, right? So I know that when I take two losses, three losses, four losses, five losses, six losses, I know that the probability of doing this is pretty much 100%, right? And if you're trading like with a higher win rate, check it out, right? So very important to know your win rate because then you can, again, plan and this goes, this consecutive things go into your risk plan. So then you write down, I, in, uh, according to my trading plan and win rate, I can lose eight trades in a row. And I'm going to be trading as I am until I lose eight trades in a row. That is a good expectancy for a loss. Right? So make sure to, to keep note of that. My stats, like I want to show you my stats, for example. Again, as I said, I take a fixed risk reward of 5R. Sometimes I'm going to take 4R depending on structure and, and even 3R when the market is really ranging and choppy. What I do oftentimes is I take partials. Uh, this is a little bit emotional as well, just to secure profit sometimes. And my profit factor is there for 2.5. Another psychological thing I do is I tend to decrease my risk on what I perceive to be low quality trades. So that's not very good, but all of those are psychological issues. My win rate uh, ranges from 35 to 48%, right? And here I have, for example, here on my FX book, the track record that I'm building for you guys. It shows a 54% win rate. However, this is because they also count partials. And a lot of times I'm going to take a partial, which then counts as a separate trade. Right? And my profit factor is so low because, again, I, I take partials. Right? And instead of like full TP at 5R, I'm going to take something at 4. I'm going to take a little bit more. Right? But that's pretty much it. My win rate is this. It ranges from 35 to it can even go above 50%. Okay? So hopefully by now you are not tired because we're going to jump into something very important that is timing and pairs, right? So make sure to make yourself a trading window and the trading window you have and the pairs you trade are your decision only. 
So again, make sure to fit trading according to your lifestyle, not the other way around, right? So according to your lifestyle, then try to fit trading according to it, right? So I had a session yesterday with a member who goes to soccer practice uh, every New York session. So then I was like, okay, well then go to your soccer practice. You don't want to limit yourself from going to soccer practice because you're, you have to trade during New York, right? Then trade a little bit later or trade during London, right? So decide when are you going to trade. My favorite sessions are from Frankfurt Open to London Lunch. So I trade from 8 a.m. GMT all the way until 12 p.m. GMT plus one. That's four hours of trading and pretty much that's it, right? I don't trade usually New York, right? The pairs, keep your list small, right? Less is more. I would recommend you by starting to backtest a few pair, pairs, gather the data, see which one works best for you, what resonates with you the most, and then pick an informed decision. So don't listen to someone telling you to trade Euro USD or pound USD. Go backtest your strategy, see which pairs work, right? And then make an informed decision, okay? For day traders, right, traders that are sticking on the 50 minute and lower and going to the one minute as well, maximum three instruments. Listen to me on this one, right? You cannot manage more than two to three pairs if you're day trading on the one minute. You're going to have lots of losses and you're going to have lots of distractions, okay? For swing traders that are trading above the 50 minute time frame, right, or even like above an hourly, four hourly time frame, then you can trade as many as you can follow. Personally, I only trade EURUSD and US30. That's it, okay? And of course, according to your lifestyle and according to your trading window, pay attention to your currency pair and its most volatile session, right? If you're going to trade during Asia, don't trade Euro USD, trade an Aussie pair. If you're going to trade during New York, don't trade an Aussie pair, trade uh, USD CAT, right? Or USD Swiss franc or Euro USD, right? Watch out for your currency pairs and know when they move the most and when is the highest probability that you achieve um, a very good return and there is a volatile move in the market. Again, there is the best approach for me, right? Once you have a strict plan and strategy, you know your areas of interest, which I'm going to teach you how to spot in the upcoming videos. And then what I simply do is set alerts, right? I have an uptrend. There is my higher low formation. I set an alert right there and I don't touch the chart, okay? Once my alert is pinked, right? I'm going to zoom in and I'm, then I'm going to drop to the lower time frame and look for my entry setup, right? So always try it for, for little screen time and high quality trades. And you do this by just setting alerts, knowing what you look for and detaching from all the little market moves that you're going to be having. So don't go FOMO, okay? This is what I'm going to share with you in the document below. So make sure to download this. This is a very nice uh, kind of overview of the sessions. This is in GMT time. So London time, UTC, right? This is your Asian range. Make sure to check out my Asian range video in order to figure out how to trade this, right? We have our pre-London pre chart prep. This is your London window trading. Then you have uh, pre-New York chart prep. You don't want to be trading right there around this time. New York opens all the way until London close is when you can definitely trade. Indices you can trade even afterwards, but then you're, you want to cut your trading day because again, what you end up doing is working a seven to, to five and more. You don't want this, okay? So here, cut trading, manager positions, right? And then fill in your notion reflections, which I'm going to be sharing with you. And then, of course, make sure to do a little bit of an end of day review. So go over your charts, journal them. I'm going to send this to you. This is very important to figure out your trading windows. And coming on to the end, so I want to touch on habits and routine, right? Because proper habits, specific actions and discipline is what will build you as a successful trader. And not only that, but as a person. So... In your plan, right, in your Notion template that I'm going to share with you, you need the morning routine, right? So what are you going to do before you sit on the chart? So don't just wake up and go to your charts. Wake up earlier, hydrate, drink some water, energize a little bit, do some exercise, do some meditation, whatever, right? So don't have one of those extreme morning routines because the best morning routine is to wake up and work, right? But I'm a big believer that you still have to wake up a little bit. Don't just wake up and sit on the screen because you're not focused, your brain is not functioning already, right? So make sure to have a morning routine. Then once you're in a proper mindset, you're refreshed and sit down and perform your analysis and then set alerts, right? During the midday, have a recap, update your charts, right? Take a break in the midday and the perfect time to do that is within that dead window uh, after the London window ends, right? Then come back to the screen, update your charts and start trading New York session, okay? And then make sure to also have end of day habits. Journal all of your trades that you took your profit and loss, your emotions, your performance, evaluate yourself, what can you learn from today, what you can improve on, right? Then perform an end-of-day markup 
every single day in my community, I share the, the daily price action, the trades that you could have taken, right? Everything. So make sure to do that, journal them. And uh, yeah, so pretty much a professional trader's life is simple and structured. So this is said by Anton Krill, uh, a trader and a hedge fund manager and a very big trader that I really look up to, especially in terms of the mindset, right? So you need a simple and a structured life. If you have all stuff going around in your trade and in your life, your training is going to be the same, right? So fix your life, your training is going to fix, right? You cannot focus and win against the best traders if you have a busy, hectic and unorganized life, right? If you lack focus, you cannot win because you're comparing and you're com competing against one of the biggest whales that are on the market, okay? You cannot improve and become a better trader if you do not monitor your progress, right? So again, how can you measure your performance? How will you evaluate yourself at the end of your day, at the end of your week? What kind of habits will you adopt in order to make a better trader? What specific actions will you take in order to achieve your goals, right? So again, always think in terms of habits, actions, routines. Okay, don't just say I want to get funded. How am I going to get funded? What are the actions that are going to help me get funded? What are the routines that I'm going to implement right in my day? Okay, and for all of this, right, for all of this, don't worry, I've got you covered. I'm going to give you that notion template where you can uh, include yeah, different habits, different routines and different measurements of yourself. All right, so pretty much we are coming to the end. I want to congratulate you for sticking all up until the end. So this is an amazing achievement in the nowadays world where people have a very low attention span and cannot really stick up until the end of a video to really put in the work. You are doing great. So again, I push you, go back, watch the video again, download the pack below, figure out your money plan, figure out your living expenses, figure out your need number, figure out how much you have to make, right? What the account balance is, D uh, design your risk management plan, right? Take care of your habits everything right so do it all include it in the document that i have provided you below right and again if you're lazy to do this then yeah you're, you're just not gonna set up the foundation and you're not gonna succeed and again you better not watch the upcoming video which is gonna be brutal i know this was a video was a little bit theory based but the next one we're gonna jump into technicals it's gonna be as detailed as this one and we're gonna have a look at how to read market structure and determine the trend correctly and we're gonna have a look at basic advanced market structure and some really good concepts so Really hopefully once again you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell in order not to miss when the next videos come out. Make sure to watch the rest of the series, this is built in a very nice flow um, starting from the foundation and then flowing onto, onto the advanced stuff. Happy to have presented this to you, let me know if you like me down in the comments and I really look forward for the next one, wishing you all the best, keep putting in the work, let me know if you have any questions and talk to you on the next technical video.